Hello, everybody. Welcome back to one of our EFMP stories. Today, we have a very exciting guest with us, Veronese Castillo. She is the founder and CEO of the Military Spouse Advocacy Network and also an EFMP parent. And we're really excited to hear more from her. Um, so without further ado, I, I would love for you just to put everyone, for people who don't know what the Military Spouse Advocacy Network is and what they do, and kind of that's part of your story, would you mind just giving a giving us an overview of what that's all about? Yes, thank you so much, Jennifer, for the invitation. I'm pretty excited to get to share my story, the other side of me as a mom. Uh, but yeah, I mean, MSAN is a, uh, a nonprofit organization that focuses on providing peer-to-peer -peer mentorship and support to other brand new spouses. Uh, we fill the gap from day one, from civilian to military, and, and transfer them and send them to the resources according to the needs uh, what the, whatever they have at the moment. It's a pretty exciting program. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful program. I know me personally. Um, we, we've inter I've interviewed a few, you a few times for um, the reporting work that I've done, and it's been um, just inspiring because we know that the military is good at a lot of things, and one of those things that it just needs a helping hand with people who can do it really well is support. And that's you know our angle on that is helping our EFMP and our special education families. But yours is those new newbies coming in, and and that is so important as well. So um, thank you for that. And now, obviously, you know it kind of stumbled out of one of those interviews that you told me that you were also an EFMP parent, and I would love for you just to share with us kind of your story as it relates to special education. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, my youngest son has autism. Uh, he is 13. And um, when we had him, and um, of course he was diagnosed with autism when he was uh, four years old. And by then we had been already in the military for a while. I was not a new spouse, but I was new to this. And uh, something that I always heard was, you will be the best advocate for your child. You will be the best advocate for your child. And although you are, because no one else knows your child the way you do, but I took that as my, my responsibility and I have to do it on my own. And I made a lot of mistakes in the process because I didn't rely on the experts, on people like you guys doing this kind of stuff, that it would have been so helpful at the moment. I mean, I was learning from what is autism, how it's affecting my child. I had to learn about behavior, about how we're gonna help them at home and education. And there were so many aspects that when you're new at it, you can drop the ball very easily because you don't even know what areas you need to cover. And, and that's where, where I think I, I made the mistakes of. One of the examples was the, uh, the very first time that we moved. Uh, with Alex being diagnosed with autism. He was diagnosed with autism in the state of Virginia. Then we moved to, to, uh, to Alabama. And when we got there, they asked me, okay, well, what does he need? Well, at the moment, I thought I knew what he needed. So this is what he needs. Later on, I realized that he needed more than that. And in order for me to change IEPs at school, uh, trying to get resources such as uh, speech therapy, uh, ABA therapy, I had to go to a long process of having to go through doctors and having to get referrals and enroll in ECHO when I could have done that from the beginning and I didn't know. I could have done early intervention and I didn't because I was not enrolled in ECHO because Alex was not getting certain resources because I thought I was covering it all areas, but I wasn't. So something that I always tell uh, a spouse, a new spouse in the EFMP world is, you will be the best advocate, but you also need support. You need the experts by your side so that you make sure that you cover all the areas because we're learning at the same time. I mean, even up to now, I'm still learning what other things I can do for, for my son uh, and having to rely on the experts because, I mean, I, I can be an expert in helping new spouses with education and support, so when it comes to NFMP, I am not an expert and I need help. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's kind of true. And, it, and that's universal of like the military spouse and military family life is mm -hmm. that there's, because the military is so big and the DOD is, has so many programs and then there's the different branches of service. So if you happen to be on a joint base, um, you know, 
you don't, you're not the expert in every area. So you have to rely upon your network of friends or um, command, whatever that might be. You have to rely on others to get information that you don't know. And it's hard because some, some of us, uh, myself included, want to have that brave face and, you know, we've got this, uh, yeah. but you know, you definitely need to find that support structure. So now that you, you're more seasoned in the FMP, you know where to go. Um, what is your go-to for new spouses as far as their first step um, to connect with what they don't know? Yeah, I think for, for, for me as an advice, it will be two and one. One will be understanding the diagnosis of, of the reason why you are in EFMP uh, and now you're enrolling in EFMP. What, what is it that it is? How is it going to affect you? What is it that you're going to need in order to continue moving forward uh, or your child? Uh, at the same time, uh, educate yourself what is EFMP, what is the benefit and, and how it's supposed to help you. I mean, we gotta understand the, the basic of the diagnosis, how it's going to impact your life and what you're going to need and what EFMP means and how they are supposed to help those needs. Uh, after that, I will say, start going to the uh, EFMP classes and trainings, uh, get to meet the coordinators at your installations, but you need to go outside of that. And that goes the outside of the installation. There's so many amazing resources. There's so many uh, different things like the work that you guys are doing. If I come to you with, with a question, how can you guide me? What other, what other areas of EFMP are out there that I'm not learning through trainings and meeting the coordinator and understanding the diagnosis? Yeah, the good thing is, is you know, as we're bringing on um, new, new team members to Partners in Promise, we're, we're adding to that subject matter expert um, kind of pool. So we, we often, we tell people, we may not know your specific question, but we know where to look. And um, but what is kind of, a, do you see any patterns when you, when you hear that a new spouse in your program has an EFMP or a diagnose, a new diagnosis and aren't even in EFMP? Is there anything that they frequently ask or are confused about or need assistance with that you kind of work with them on? You know, one of the, uh, one of the many challenges of a new spouse is that you're learning everything at the same time. You're learning the lifestyle. You're learning what Triker is. You're learning your benefits. You're learning about you're about to move. There's so many things in it, then now we're throwing another big world of EFMP up top of everything else they gotta understand. So what we're seeing lately is that we gotta be able to educate and mentor the new spouse, the relationship of having Tricare enrolling into other programs in order to be able to get the support through EFMP, regardless if it's medical, educational, outside resources. So as a new spouse, it's becoming even a little bit more overwhelming having to learn about EFMP because they're still even trying to understand how Tricare works and what Tricare is all about. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that we're seeing is like, okay, I just got married, what do I do next? And, and I have a child and needs help. Oh my goodness. So we have to go all the way to the bottom, such as make sure everybody has an ID, make sure you're enrolling deers. By the way, this is Triker, this is how it works. You need to make sure you go to doctors. And so, so there's so much when it comes to a new spouse. I mean, at least when I, when I became a new, uh, a new spouse in the EFMP world, I knew how Tracker works. I knew the basics. I had a foundation of knowledge as a military spouse. But as a new military spouse, you have two different worlds to learn at the same time. And it can be very overwhelming if they don't have the support and people guiding them. This is why it should be done next. And make sure you do this. Make sure you do that because there's so much of the unknown that if I made mistakes uh, when I was already a seasoned spouse, and I knew how the military life works and Triker and everything. Can you imagine the, uh, the amount of, of, of things that can be done incorrectly when a new spouse is trying to manage the whole aspect of being a new military spouse plus EFMP on top of it? Yeah. And we're seeing uh, you know, a lot through these stories and just our surveys and just our communication within our community is there is 
a lot that you have to proactively step up and advocate for your child, especially when it comes to education. So our our primary focus is helping um, ensure that the military lifestyle does not further complicate receiving of a free and appropriate public education. So, of course, you know, we know that that's hard for all special education um, students because of the underfunding of IDEA and all of those things. Mm -hmm. But for the military lifestyle who already, you know, we're already drowning in information, we're drowning in resources, but we don't know where to look, we don't know how to connect those dots. So we're here to kind of like help streamline that and also advocate to make it so that we don't have to advocate anymore, that the program itself is up and running the way that it needs to be. So um, as far as um, advocating and your, the educational component, can you go back, we'll hop back to your personal story. How has um, your personal educational advocacy, or maybe maybe you haven't even had to go that route, how, how has um, moving to new locations affected um, your child and education wise? Yeah, you know, uh, I experienced both. I experienced the, the ones that have all the support and they're really to go above and beyond for your child to the ones that you have to stay on top of it because they may not provide or give everything that your child needs. And of course, the challenge of having to transfer an IUP to different states every single time you move. Even uh, something to mention um, that you move IEPs within different states and then to other parts of the world where you go to schools by the Department of Defense and you're bringing an IEP. So there's so many different changes in between. Um, but I have experienced both and the, uh, like, I guess we can say the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, I, I think that one of the, one of the things that, that I've done is to make sure that I'm always having a lot of communication with the teachers. Uh, not so that I can tell them what to do and how to do it because I'm not there, I'm not the teacher. I give them that flexibility and I trust them to do that. But I stay on top so that they know that I am a parent that is always making sure that my child is gonna get what he needs and deserves. Um, so, so there were times where I didn't have to be so much on top of it because I knew the, uh, the school was going to implement everything that was needed. And there were some times that I needed to be extremely involved because I wasn't sure if those uh, needs and those things that, that they were requested were actually gonna be implemented. Mm -hmm. So you will find yourself being extremely involved sometimes and some other times saying, okay, we have a great system here. I know it's gonna be great. And you can focus on other areas and how to support your child or yourself. So one of the things that we're also hearing is that, you know, and especially because I, I, I'm thinking of this particular EFMP story as kind of speaking to the new spouse. So, mm -hmm. you know, in speaking with you and I, my husband, we've been connected to the military for over a decade, you know, so we are not afraid clearly to speak out um, against some, someone who is considered an expert in their area. So, you know, you're talking to special education teachers, you're talking to these specialists who are experts in, the, in their space, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't question them and you should. Um, and, and I think that especially when it comes to special education, um, the individuals have wonderful hearts. They're in, in it for a reason, they're in this field for a reason, they care about your child, certainly. Um, and, and most of them, you know, want to provide the service, but because of the limited resources available to schools, sometimes they um, don't offer up extra. So yeah. it's, it's truly up to you to be that advocate, even if, even if they're seemingly caring, seemingly supportive, you definitely need to do your homework beforehand so that you know what you're receiving. So my question to you would be, um, you know, you said you had those different experiences, which it's great to hear that you've had good experiences as well. So that's awesome. Um, and then, but I guess my question would be for a new spouse who is starting off at a new district, this is the first time they're there, um, what would a red flag be? Now that you have that comparison point, what would, what would you look to to say, hey, I know what good is. Now I can recognize not so great. So yeah. what, is that, what is that point of recognition for you? You know, and, uh, and that's a great question. And before I address that, I just want to say that you address, you said something very good. That it's okay to ask questions. 
just like it is okay for you to ask for second opinions when it comes to doctors, when it comes to anything, it's, it's okay to ask for a second opinion. Uh, when you go to meet a school for the first time, um, you gotta make sure you do your homework like you said. You need to kind of understand what is an IEP. You gotta understand what is entitled, what comes with it, uh, so that you kind of like start writing down what is it that your child needs. So that when you meet for the very first time at the school and say, I have a child with a special needs and we have an IEP, or maybe I don't have an IEP, I rely on your school to do the testing. I rely on your professionals to tell me what my child needs. Um, when you meet, with the professionals to give you a, a, a background of what your child is gonna be tested on, what is gonna be utilized to be tested, and how those results will be utilized. One of the things that I learned was, we need to make sure that our child is not being overwhelmed by testing. I have requested the schools that when they test my child it needs to be done in blocks throughout the week, not all at once. If they do that, then the data that you're receiving as results can be conflicting because your child was overwhelmed. Uh, so one of the things that I would recommend is a US question such as, if you have an IEP, make sure that they give you all the details of how that IEP and those needs are going to be implemented and there are goals with those needs. And if you are about to receive a diagnosis or the school is gonna help you with testing to see what's going on with, with your child, Make sure that you ask what kind of testing is going to be done, how it's going to be implemented, and how are the results going to be utilized to get to that diagnosis. Because like I said, the first time that my child was, was tested, they did the whole test in one day. So they came back to me and I told me, you know, I mean, your child needs a lot of help. And I was thinking, well, that's not the same kid in my house. I mean, he's got communication. I mean, he's, he is a uh, high-functioning autistic. And the results the school was giving me was a very severe autistic child. So we had to redo the testing because when I asked questions, we find out that they did everything at once. He didn't know the teachers. He was brand new at the school, so he was not cooperating. So another thing of, of testing will be that allow your child to get to know the staff so that he feels comfortable when the testing start, starts so that he doesn't feel overwhelmed and up with a bunch of strangers, your child will not cooperate and probably they'll give you a diagnosis that is not exactly the accurate. Or you might have to do it again and, uh, you know, and stress yeah. out your child again. Again, yeah. So, so yeah, so that's actually a really interesting point of, um, you know, you're not just holding them accountable for the, the educating part. It's all the steps along the way um, yeah. require research and and, and we know, <laughs> as military spouses, you're already asked to juggle quite a few things. Um, but that's, you know, that's why there are resources like mentors and services that can help you point you towards um, questions, answer your questions at Partners in Promise. So you have, you are not alone. It is a lot of information, but you are not alone. And that's one of the, my favorite things about the military community is that we are a community. Right now we're far apart. We're in our own little spaces, but yeah. you know, we are a community and we can find resources for each other. You know, the, uh, one of the things is, uh, there's so many advocates for EFMP in our community. I mean, there's so many of us that go through it. There's so many of us that learn from it and now we wanna share with others. Uh, there's so many amazing uh, military spouses going all the way to the top to make changes to policy. To, uh, to make our government aware of the needs and the challenges that we're facing with, with the FMP. So rely on those people as well. Those are your mentors. Uh, there's a lot of great resources such as you guys who come and ask questions. Um, you guys make uh, uh, those spouses that I'm talking about. You guys are making changes. You guys are advocating. Now we are here, I'm here, and many other spouses are here to mentor you, share our story, and hopefully you'll get to learn from that so that you can say, oh, I didn't think about that. That's exactly what I got to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, but to know that there's other spouses beyond mentoring, there's spouses fighting, trying to change policy, trying to make sure that EFMP program is successful and is doing what it's supposed to do. So there's so many of, so many of us helping us the, uh, within each other and, and the new ones coming in with mentorship and also reassuring them that 
rescue, they might find some broken pieces in the program because there are. It's not a, uh, a perfect program, and I think that there's no perfect program. And there's so many changes that need to be done in order to make it even better. So I want new spouses to know that just that you rely on mentors to learn and get ideas and tricks and stuff like that, please know that there are other spouses working at a higher level, making sure that everything is even better and more successful and all of those things. So I will recommend spouses to, to talk to other spouses. We got you, we're here for you, like Jennifer said, you're not alone. Talk to other spouses. Uh, their spouses will recommend you to those that know. If you come to MSAM, we'll, we'll let you know we have an EFMP advocate that can answer your questions and can also link you to other resources. So rely on each other. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to say that you are an EFMP parent or you're, you're, you are an EFMP, uh, uh, someone what they need and you need support. I mean, we got spouses enrolled in EFMP. We got, we got kids also. So one of the things that I always tell new spouses is do not be afraid. Do not feel that you're being categorized or coded. I mean, you are at a different code because of orders and it's a uh, protocol through the military. But that doesn't mean that, that you're different. That doesn't mean that you belong to another group. You still belong to our family. You're still in our group. Uh, it's just that we have additional needs and there's nothing wrong with that. Rely on those to help you. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. Don't ever be afraid to question anybody. Don't ever be afraid to ask for second opinions. And don't ever be afraid that having a child with special needs or you being the person with special needs is going to affect anything that comes between now and then in the military career. Yeah, well, I thank you so much for, for chatting with us. And, and you know, what you just said is just, you know, resonating. Don't be afraid. We, you have support. You mm -hmm. are, um, it, it's a lot and we know that. Mm -hmm. And there are people fighting for you. We are fighting for you at Partners in Promise. And, and then you have the front end of Military Spouse Advocacy Network helping you connect to services. So that's just, um, the, and there's so many more and we're all a team. So there's, there's something for you. There's an organization that can help you. Um, so just know that you are in good hands if you are willing to reach out. And, and also um, do know that um, the advocacy is exposing yourself a little bit and telling your story. Mm -hmm. And we need you to be, to normalize this program, to make it so that the future spouses don't feel, and, and service members don't feel hesitation to participate in the program. Because just like anything, they can, they can slap it into an annual training and it may not make a difference, but if we speak up and we share and we just, you know, we're honest about it, it takes bravery to do that, but just know that if we're doing it together, you know, that's, we're, we're stronger together. So thank you so Our much. Crew. Each story makes a difference. Each yeah. story is unique and that's what makes the impact. Very true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Bernice, for, you for, for, for serving our community and for talking with us today. Thank, thank you. you. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye-bye.